Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Financial Tidbits here with me, Royston at NOF. Guys, what do you think is the worst case scenario that can happen to cause a major correction in the stock market right now? Naysayers have been warning of a stock market correction for years. The key question isn't about whether the stock market is in a bubble. It probably is. One should be asking instead, when is this bubble going to pop? Well, no one has got any definitive answer to this million dollar or should I say trillion dollar question because that might be the kind of losses the global markets are expected to face once the bubble eventually pops. So back to the question of the worst case scenario happening to the market. In my humble opinion, the worst case scenario happening is that of stagflation, a situation where we are facing rising price pressure while yet at the same time slowing economic growth. I'm not saying that doom and gloom is upon us. I'm just saying that it pays to be prepared for such a scenario to materialize. That's why in this video, I'll be highlighting five ETFs that I believe are good candidates for stagflation investing. Even if stagflation does not materialize, these five ETFs are all primed to outperform in the coming decade as a result of positive macro tailwinds. The first ETF is linked to real estate. Typically, in a rising price environment, real assets which have defined supply will see their value rise as well. That's why property holds up pretty well in an inflationary environment. The first ETF is a REIT ETF that goes by the name of Pacer Benchmark Industrial Real Estate ETF ticker INDS. This is an ETF that invests in US REITs and property counters that are in the industrial segment, such as warehousing and self-storage. This REIT is not just an inflationary hedge, but one that is indirectly exposed to the mega trend of e-commerce and online purchasing that will remain a dominant theme in the coming decade. What I like about this ETF is that among all the US real estate ETFs out there, it is one of those rare ones that have shown pretty consistent performance even during the height of COVID-19 where REITs generally have been decimated and substantially underperformed the general market. This REIT has been able to stand head and shoulders in the worst of times and I believe that better times could be ahead for this ETF if inflationary pressure does take shape. The second ETF is another ETF that's linked to real assets and one of my favorites to play a growing mega team, regardless if stagflation is happening or not. That is the first water trust, ticker FIW, an ETF that is designed to track the performance of small, mid and large cap companies that derive a substantial portion of their revenue from the portable water and wastewater industry. The world is slowly running out of fresh and clean water and we all need water for our survival, stagflation or no stagflation. That is the harsh reality. I do expect demand for products and services offered by companies focusing on clean water to continue expanding in the coming decade and the FIW ETF is primed to do just that. Similarly to the LINDS ETF, the FIW ETF has a 5 star ETF rating by Morningstar and it's probably the only natural resource ETF that has consistently outperformed the S&P 500 over the past decade. All other natural resources ETF have witnessed triple digits underperformance during this period. I do expect that outperformance to continue even in a stagflation environment. The third ETF is a new ETF that was introduced just this year. This is the Horizon Kinetics Inflation Beneficiaries ETF ticker INFL. What this ETF aims to do is to invest in companies that benefit from rising prices of real assets, such as those whose revenues are expected to increase with inflation without correspondingly increases in expenses. These are companies that are typically your brokerage and exchange counters, commodity players, pharma companies, etc. that will benefit in an inflationary environment but will not be held ransom by rising expenses such as wage costs as these companies typically are not manpower heavy. Some of the major and more prominent holdings include Charles River Laboratories, Deutsche Bauhaus, and Archer Daniel Midlands. Since its inception this year, 
the counter has returned about 20%, keeping pace with the broader market. The fourth ETF is another of my favorite that is linked to the commodity industry. Note that commodities tend to do well in an inflationary environment as well as the early years of a stagflation period. This ETF goes by the name of iShares MSCI Global Metals and Mining Producers ETF, ticker PICK, and just like its name suggests, this ETF buys into commodity producers. This is one of those commodity ETFs that caught my attention because of its outstanding track record of outperformance. It is no secret that commodity mining companies have been a huge laggard over the past 5 to 10 years. The PICK ETF is the only minor ETF that has managed to beat the S&P 500 over the past 5 years where all others lag the market by triple digits. While there's no guarantee that its performance can be replicated, there are talks that we might be in the early stages of the next commodity super cycle, one that might be supercharged by an inflationary environment. If that is so, then the PICK ETF is worthy of your consideration. The final ETF I have on this list to play a stagflation environment is a niche one, one that focuses on finding quality companies. According to ETFDB.com, there are about 27 ETFs that are structured to find companies with good quality features, those which are fundamentally robust and can withstand a massive slowdown in the economy without going under. This niche quality ETF that caught my attention is the Pacer US Export Leaders ETF, ticker PEXL. You probably would not have heard of this ETF since it only commands a market cap of 2 billion. This niche ETF buys into quality companies that have a high percentage of foreign sales and high free cash flow growth. It is mainly focused on stocks in the technology and healthcare sectors. Again, this unheard of ETF has been quietly outperforming all its quality peers, being the sole ETF that outperformed the S&P 500 over a 3-year, 2-year, 1-year and year-to-date basis. The PEXL ETF is the most risky ETF in this list by virtue of its small size, but one that is well diversified with 100 large and mid-cap companies that are not dependent on the US for their growth. These are the 5 ETFs that I believe will perform well over the coming decade. Stagflation or no stagflation? Again, this is not a recommendation to buy, but a sharing session to provide you with ideas on how to better position your portfolio if a worst case scenario is to happen. Once again, if you do enjoy the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the NOF YouTube channel. This is Royston, signing out.